Today we're going to have a look at a ChatGPT browser extension that is fast becoming one of my favorites. This tool literally puts your browser on steroids with ChatGPT and automation. It has a powerful built-in prompts library, plus it can monitor or extract data from any web page. Let's get started. The first thing you need to do is head over to harper.ai and click on this Get AI Agent button. That'll take you through to the Chrome Web Store where you can add this extension to Chrome. This extension works on any of the Chromium-based web browsers such as Edge, Opera, or Brave. Once it's installed, you'll get the pop-up window with an introduction video. Next, pin the Harper extension to your menu bar for quick and easy access. Next, you can click the Harper icon to open the Harper widget. You can also press and hold Alt A on Windows or Option A on a Mac. I like to go to the settings and set it to night mode. And then once the widget is open, you can send it a command. So let's say for example, forward slash summary. And the first time you send a command, it will pop up a login connect to chat GPT window. So just go ahead and do that. It's perfectly secure. Once that's done, you can close off that pop up window and Harper will continue with the instruction that you gave it. First thing you need to realize about Harper is that its prompts are page aware. So Harper AI collects all the content of a web page before sending it to ChatGPT. This ensures the information received by ChatGPT is accurate and organized, which leads to more effective results. Here I have an email that I'm going to respond to with the help of Harper. First, I'm going to type forward slash into the chat window here, which is going to bring up this commands palette. You can see that there is a menu across the top and they're categorized into sections like marketing and SEO, copywriting, recruiting, etc. We're going to go for the very first command, which is composer. So you click on composer. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to write an email. So we click on the email button, ask us if it's a new email or a reply. In this case, we're going to, going to be doing a reply. And then it says, which email would you like to reply to? Leave blank and it'll pass the email from the open page. So we can just press control enter and it'll send the page command. And then what should the reply include or be about? So this is a question and there you go. That is the completed response. So dear Kai, thank you for reaching out to me. I'm doing well and I appreciate the opportunity to share my thoughts on glass. So of course that response might be a bit too long and formal. So I can ask it to please make the reply shorter and informal. And then off it goes. Thanks for reaching out. I'm doing great. Happy to have a chat with you about glass. So the nice thing about the compose command is, as you can see in the window here, is that you can compose DMs, tweets, LinkedIn posts, articles, press releases, etc. So there's a lot of flexibility in this compose command and it's definitely something that I recommend you check out and play around with. Next, we're going to take a look at how you can create your own custom prompts in Harper AI using their custom token parameters. So if you click forward slash in the chat window, it brings up the command window and at the very top, there's a create command button. So you can click on that and it opens this dialog. I've added a custom command or a prompt called the note taking bot. And as you can see here, it allows you to add a custom parameter which is defined by the token p1 so you can add more parameters by clicking the add parameter button here and then delete them by clicking the red bin icon your main prompt goes into this window here and then you just need to make sure to reference your custom token using the p1 parameter over here. Then you can also add a page URL, which is useful to refer back to. I'll show you in a second how this shows up in ChatGPT. And then obviously it needs to pull in the page text in order to create the summary. So you can now click on save command and your custom prompt now shows up under the user section in this menu at the top. So we're going to click on the note taking bot, which is immediately going to ask us what style and tone of voice we want to use. That remember is our custom parameter that we set. And so we're just going to go for a conversational and informal tone, and then it'll go off and produce the result. So now in the meantime, what's happening is this is also being saved to your ChatGPT account. So if you switch over to your ChatGPT window and you refresh, you'll see that this chat over here is what we just generated. So we've got our instruction as well as the URL. So we know which URL we were summarizing and then the text after that. So that is how you set up a custom prompt using tokens in Harper.ai. Next, we're going to have a look at some of my favorite use cases for Harper. The first is to scrape and extract data from any web page. In this case, we've got an Amazon page open with a listing of protein shakes. So what you can do is you can go to Harper, type the forward slash command, and then just type extract, and it'll bring up a couple of commands. You can extract contacts, data, or SEO keywords from any article. So I'm going to go with the data option. So it's got a default prompt here. I've rewritten it slightly. So what I've said is I want to extract 10 products from the text and then to format it in a table with four columns, which include product name, price, 
reviews and rating. So I'm just going to paste that prompt in here and then click go. It'll pass the page content and return back a table of top 10 products along with their ratings and number of reviews. What you can do then is you can at the bottom right here, there's a little copy to clipboard icon. You can click to copy this to your clipboard. Then you can head over to table convert, mark down to Excel, and you can paste that into this box here. Make sure that you've got the Excel option checked. And then you can copy that to clipboard and then head over to your Google Sheet, paste the data in there, and then you can work with that data however you see fit. So you can sort by price, you can sort by rating, etc. So that's a pretty handy way of getting data from any web page using Harper AI. The next Harper command we're going to look at is summarizing YouTube videos. So you go into the Harper window, type forward slash, type YouTube, you get this YouTube summary option here. So this allows you to save time on watching YouTube videos and then also to break down those video transcripts into chunks so that it's able to give you a summary of longer YouTube videos. So as you know from my previous video, that is normally quite a manual process whereas Harper actually does that for you now. So click on this command here and it'll go off and chunk down the transcript into sections and then create a summary for each. Quite a long video, it's almost three hours long and you'll see that the first chunk here is one of 13. So it's chunked a very long transcript into 13 sections and then it'll go through and summarize all of those for you. Next, we're gonna have a look at how you can summarize PDFs. First thing you do is you head over to pdf.js, click on their demo link, which takes you to their GitHub page and then you click the this link that loads up their PDF reader demo and it has got a paper loaded here but we want to load something from a hard drive click this little icon up here at the top right open file opens the browse dialog and we're gonna load up a paper of 26 pages from our hard drive next we open up harper.ai and we type forward slash and then summary so we get two options here summary which is just to summarize the page content or an extended summary so I'm gonna go for extended summary and then click go and off it goes. It now has access to the PDF on the page and is able to summarize all that data. Next we're going to look at how you can use Harper to track web pages and notify you of any changes to those pages. So that's quite useful if you're looking for a certain item on a shopping site and you want to detect price drops or back in stock alerts. You can also create smart auto updating purchase lists via third-party service like make.com. I'll show you a bit more about that in a minute. Next we're going to click on the Harper icon to open the Harper pop-up and then we're going to switch from the AI to the monitor tab. You'll see that because we're on an Amazon page, it has detected a bunch of different data. And the first one that it's got here is the price that we'd like to monitor. So we can just click on that and it'll pop up a bunch of options that we can customize. So the first is the schedule. How often do we want to run this action? And I'm going to just choose once every day. Next is the monitor section where we can customize the value or the data that we're tracking. But in this case, we've already selected the price so we'll leave that one alone next is the trigger so in other words when do we want this action to run when the value is up or down or within a certain range next is actions and integrations where you can define how you'd like to be notified so the first is a browser notification after that is the make or integromat integration that is a third-party service that allows you to integrate with thousands of different apps so you can send your messages to spreadsheets etc you can also play a sound or you can send an email directly to your inbox. Then when you're done, you can scroll down to the bottom of the tab and there is a start button to start running your automation. So you can click that. You'll see that your automation pops up and it's running. You can also click on the dashboard button. That'll pop up a new window where you can see all your running automations. You can edit your tasks and customize them. You can play them or run the tasks once. You can also stop your tasks or export them or delete them. You might want to find out when a item that is currently out of stock comes back in stock. So Harper helps you do that too. You can set up a monitor for a specific element on a page. So you can click on this element button here and then you can select the item that you'd like to monitor. So I'm going to monitor this bit of text here that says temporarily out of stock. When I click that, it gives me two options. I'm just going to monitor this HTML element. Then what we can do is we can trigger it when the item is removed. All the rest of the customization options remain the same. So you can decide how often you want it done and how you want to be notified. Then you can click on the start button. That'll also show up in your dashboard. The last thing I want to do is give you a brief overview of how to set up the Make integration. So Make helps you connect to almost one and a half thousand different apps like Google Sheets, Gmail, 
Google Drive, the list goes on and it's pretty much if you can imagine it, then you can connect to it. So the next thing you want to do is you want to head over to your Harper dashboard and click on this cog icon to edit the task and then open the actions and integrations tab over here. Then under make Integromat, you'll see there is an install app button. So you click that, it'll pop up a new window that'll ask you to install that app into your Make account. So of course, what you'll need is a free make.com account. So just head over to make.com and set that up first. Once you've set up your free Make account, you'll be able to log into the dashboard and then click on scenarios. And from scenarios, you'll be able to create a new scenario. Then you'll see a screen like this where you'll be able to click this plus icon. Then you just type in Harper to find the Harper web monitor. And then that is the trigger that you can send back to Harper. So you can copy this address to clipboard and then head back to your dashboard and enter that URL into this box over here. So assuming we want to update a Google Sheet, we need to add two new modules. So if you right click onto the canvas here and add modules, you can add Google Sheets modules. So this is a module to add a row to a spreadsheet. It then finds data, which is being passed from the web monitor. You can drag these items into the boxes here, and then those get passed through to Google Sheets. There's also a router, which routes the information, depending on what it is, through to the correct cell in the spreadsheet. So in this case, Harper is checking the data once a day and then sending that message through to Make. Make is sending through the data to my spreadsheet. So it sends through the product name. This price column is fixed. So this is data that I've added. It doesn't change. And then Make also includes the latest price as well as the date updated and time updated so that I can see the difference and whether the price has changed and on what date and time it changed. If you'd like to see a more in-depth tutorial on exactly how I got this automation working, then let me know by leaving a comment in the comments below. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to make sure you see more stuff from me. I'll keep you updated on everything happening in tech and AI right now. And if you want to nerd out on more cool futuristic AI tools, head over to AIwebguide.com and join the newsletter. Also check out the links in the description below. I'll see you in the next one.